find a way, maybe up that way. Yeah. yeah. Here we are next to a Proven 6 kilowatt, and I'm with Charlie Robb, who's uh, got his own company, Element Engineering UK. And Charlie services Provens and uh, has done so for a long time. Charlie, you also service other types of turbines, don't you? Uh, I've worked on a lot of wind turbines in the past, uh, although Provens are the ones I work with the most, and I also work on a, all shapes and sizes of hydro turbines. Just lucky you didn't throw them away. Uh, what else is there in there? There'll be a handle for the breeze. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, very good. Right, we're back in business. Thought we were going to get an early lunch there. Are there any major differences between something like this and uh, something like an Enercon turbine? Well, obviously a great difference of scale. Um, you still need big, fairly big specialised tools even to work on a machine of this size. Uh -huh. um, the likes of a big Enercon turbine, you wouldn't be able to work on, most people wouldn't be able to work on their own machine uh, or even use an independent person, you normally have to use a service crew from the manufacturer. I always used to encourage purchasers of Provins to uh, consider doing their own maintenance and I think a lot of them thought they would when when it was initially installed and then they see what's involved yeah. and think better of it. Um, I suppose the main thing is the winch and the big spanners, um, but uh, uh, you know they're they're not so expensive to buy. I think people are just put off by the things that they might might get wrong. Uh, and also, there's definitely servicing and servicing. Some people turn up and grease a turbine, call it serviced, and put it back up again. But that's not properly done, in my opinion. So when you buy one of these things, finding someone who can support them and making sure that they'll maintain them and presumably be around for 20 years, would you say? Or... We've got to hope they're still going to be around, although you'd always be able to get support from Proven or their network, so long as they're still around. Right, okay. And Proven have been around for 20 odd years, getting on for 20 years. Could you just very briefly sort of explain in, in simple terms how something like this works? It's relatively simple. Um, the turbine itself, if you look up at it, uh, there is there's a shaft running from the rotor end, the left hand end. There's a shaft runs right through the middle to the end with a circular cover on it, the domed cover on it, which is where the generator yeah. is. Uh, wires from the generator come down the tower uh, and underground to the house where the inverter and other electronics are that convert it into grid power. The turbine's connected into this control box, uh -huh. which uh, rectifies that the turbine generates wild AC which is variable voltage variable frequency uh, rectifies it to DC direct current uh, and then that connects through to the inverter which converts the DC into mains AC which then goes into the grid through the, another isolator and a meter a dedicated meter so that's the one that they get the fits uh, registered on uh, some, some of these some of the provens especially the earlier ones were for battery charging systems rather than grid connected but they work in much the same way uh, and I mainly service my own installations uh, but there are a few others a few orphans that I've picked up along the way <laughs> how often do these uh, these sort of turbines need service uh, provens in theory once a year um, in practice they don't get, all get serviced that often but um, they need it every couple of years normally at least the hydraulic power pack for the winch so petrol engine will shatter the piece. Anything that as an owner you should look out for, Charlie, to make sure that your turbine is operating as efficiently as possible? There are two aspects. Um, one is to be sure that it's been installed right in the first place and that the, the settings are right in the inverter. The other thing is that you do get sounds from the machine. Um, you get um, kind of creaking noises as it, as it yaws to face the wind, which can be a sign that there's a problem with the, the yaw bearings. Um, and they do get increasingly rattly if the springs, the springs on the blades, if they get um, 
worn, forget rattly. What's your people budget for uh, on an annual basis in terms of uh, overhead to, to support this sort of thing? I have sort of a standard table of costs depending on the size of machine um, and, and, and I think I'm probably cheaper than some uh, but certainly owners should expect to pay a few hundred pounds a year for servicing uh, depending on the size of the machine. Um, sometimes they seem surprised by that uh, but uh, if you think about it, it's a machine that they've spent maybe over £20,000 on. They should expect it to require some money spending on it. Um, and, and bearing in mind that servicing usually takes a whole day, plus all the equipment.